All right, guys, time to take a look at the Damasco DS30. You know what, before we get started, let's move that minute hand out of the way so you can look at the full dial of what is displayed on there. So screw that back in. Yeah, screw down crown, 200 meter water resist. Before I get started, I want to say big thanks to Riley. And uh, he has a, a cool YouTube channel. He doesn't put out as much content as he used to, but I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Uh, I believe it's Yankee Rider, I think is what it's called. So, but uh, he sent this guy in and that matte case Zen 104. So he kind of had his little dance with the German watches. I don't know. I think he's playing around with a Grand Seiko right now for the most part. But um, of the two, maybe I'm just a little desensitized to the Zen 104. But uh, these Damascos, they're, they're such a good watch and crazy good uh, value, I think, for the... Um, the tack and the just clean lines of it because uh, I looked up one source, uh, Mark over at Long Island Watch, he carries these. He has them in stock. Price is $971. You might even be able to get some sort of discount codes plus he does free shipping. So if you're looking for one, I'll put a link to his uh, website in the description as well. I have no affiliation with him. I mean, I know Mark and I talk to him occasionally or text with him occasionally. Uh, but uh, we don't. He didn't send me this. Riley sent me this. I don't have any affiliation with Mark. I just know he's a good guy. So, uh, what we're looking at here is a ETA two eight two. Wait a minute. What am I jumping into the movement for? We got to talk about the size. We do the size first. Come on, get with it, Rob. Uh, Thirty nine millimeter case, forty seven and a half lug to lug. You can see nice, evenly sloped lugs that turn down, and then they come to a point and they're drilled. So, I mean the. The clean lines on this case are just so perfect. Um, German perfection, right? So 39 case, 47.5 lug to lug, only 10.3 thick. I have read in some of the descriptions that it's like 10 or just under 10. I just measured it 10.3. Actually, it was like 10.33. So uh, I know there's sometimes variance with these plastic um, calibers, but just over 10. 20 millimeter lug width, so whatever strap you want to put on this, this thing would easily work great on this leather or maybe uh, like an Erica strap. That would be pretty slick or, you know, an Erica style strap. I don't know what it's, the elastic straps. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, something like that would work great. I think there are some bracelet options for these. And I was just talking to a bunch of my friends about uh, the Damasco bracelet. Uh, just a phenomenal bracelet. Uh, well built and everything but it has that butterfly clasp and their bracelets are crazy expensive worth it because you know how intricate they are and how well done they are but uh, I think there's a bracelet for this maybe not I'll look the crown is 5.9 millimeter and like I said it is screwed down and is signed and then just for kicks I measured I usually don't do this I measured how uh, far the crown sticks out so like how tall the crown is I guess and I measured 4.4 millimeter because it does seem like it kind of protrudes out a little bit, but um, it's still plenty comfortable on most wrist size. And I'll show that here in a moment. Okay, now the movement. It is a elaborate grade uh, ETA 2824. This guy, I did throw it on the time grapher. It's running at a plus five seconds dial up snapshot in time, but uh, super happy with the ETAs. Every time I get them on the time grapher, they just perform really well. Uh, we'll look at the case back here real quick. As we zoom in, and you'll see uh, water death rating 20 bar, 200 meter. You can also see a longer number there down below with the D for the uh, branding, DS30.0895. I'm sure that's just a longer part number. Some uh, German writing there. I don't know German at all, but it is made in Germany, so that's good. Hey, I'm guessing that right there, sapphire glass, is uh, probably first sapphire glass. So maybe I do know a little German. All right, so here we go. Well, I do know one word. Was it, um, am I going to get in trouble for saying this? Was it Scheisen? That was uh, a word that I remember watching the Bourne series when uh, they go outside the uh, embassy. <laughs> she said that. Okay, anyway. So you, a three-handed model and a date at the 3 o'clock there. Really discreet. It doesn't upset the balance of the dial at all, in my opinion, because it is a black wheel and a um, white printing. The rest of it's all printed on. All the loom is X1 GLC1 loom. So it should be pretty good loom. We'll do a loom shot towards the end of the video. And the case, in case I didn't mention, is 
stainless steel sub submarine steel. I don't maybe it's not stainless steel. It's submarine steel and it's case hardened. Um, I'm not sure the Vickers on it. Again, you'll have to look up the technical specs on that. But it is a sub steel uh, and it's uh, very tough, but yet just good looking. So super super durable watch. I believe there's AR coating on the top and bottom of the crystal, so that might be something that people could complain about potentially because. With AR coating on the top, it could wear off, kind of like I showed on that Zen 104. Not a big deal. There's actually some techniques I was reading up on some Omega watches because the Seamaster does it as well, the Omega Seamaster. And there have been some people that actually do some techniques to actually remove the AR coating off the top of the crystal, and it still looks pretty dang good versus just having the scratches on there. So that's something you could do if you have like uh, some scratches or something on your AR coating on top of your crystal. Just something to think about. Maybe if it happens to one of my crystals, I'll try to do that technique and show you. But I, I remember reading something about it. Uh, bead blasted uh, sub steel is what it's called. So, but you can see that beautiful dial. I mean, just beautiful, huge sword hands, all stark white with that really long seconds hand, uh, also in stark white. So if you can't read this watch, then maybe you just need to get a G-Shock digital. I don't know. I don't mean to pick on you too much, but all right, let's uh, put this thing on wrist. I'm going to take off the Breitling. I'm still in my honeymoon phase with the Breitling Super Ocean. Super, super glad I picked that up. And um, big, you know, shout out to uh, Rock the Watch. He um, helped me out, encouraged me with that uh, per request and, you know, just watching his videos. We obsess when we watch these videos. Heck, I bet you anything, there's probably people, you can chime out in the comments. I know maybe sometimes you don't write in the comments, but if you already own a Damasco DS30 and you're watching this video, say it in the comment. Because I, what is wrong with us? We will already have this watch. I'll still watch a video of the Super Ocean, and I already have it. I don't know what's wrong with us. Here it is next to the uh, Seiko SKX, just for kicks. Uh, pretty similar, like, lug to lug and everything. Uh, so if you can wear this, you can easily wear this, you know, even though it's, well, it's not really large, 39 by 47 and a half. I can wear it, you can wear it, everybody can wear it. I mean, unless you have like an eight and a half inch wrist, this might look a little small on you, but man, this watch wears, I'm trending towards the larger watches right now, but I'm telling you, I put this one on and uh, it feels and looks pretty dang good on wrist. And I'm usually a bracelet guy too, but uh, this watch just screams to be either on a leather or a really nice strap of sorts. You know, like I said, like a more of a military inspired strap or something that would work really good. All right, enough babbling. Let's check the, well, before I do the loom, the, this is the leather strap that came on it. It has a fixed keeper, floating keeper. It has the uh, stitches going there. The, I love that look. Very simple, but clean. Uh, well done. Matching hardware. So just a nice leather strap. But leather straps wear out eventually. And I'm judging by the angle or the curve there. I'm guessing it has uh, curved spring bars in it too. All right, let's kill the lights. Check the loom on this because it's also going to be legible in low light as displayed there. Of course, you have the tuna over there off to the left showing off. Nothing beats the tuna. We know that. Whatever. Come on, tuna. Uh, but the uh, Damasco is no slouch for sure. That is a really nice, healthy application of loom. And before I go, I do want to talk real quick. And I either want to buy one, get one loaned in, or maybe I'll talk to Mark over at Long Island Watch about maybe seeing if he can hook me up with just loaning me one. But the Damasco new in-house movement looks amazing. I definitely want to check one of those out as soon as I can. That's probably, in my opinion, one of the more exciting in-house movements from a brand because... It's kind of like a reconfigured uh, ETA movement. In fact, it actually uses, or uh, they, I don't think they use ETA parts when they made it, but if it ever needs servicing, they some of the ETA parts will work in the movement, even though it's reconfigured. So I'm excited to see that movement. It's quite the upgrade over a regular one, but I think it's kind of cool. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.